Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week, we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. In this episode, we're gonna share with you what we believe to be four simple steps to creating any new habit you want in your life. Now, this habit can be, whether it's waking up at a certain time, it could be nutritional or diet related, it could be uh, new exercise, you wanna start exercising so many hours per day, or you wanna lose weight and so to do that you need this habit it could be being a better husband or spouse or wife it could be um, any new habit that you want to implement in your life especially something maybe you've been struggling with we're going to share with you and break it down for you examples from our own lives as well as how you can implement these four simple and profound steps into your life to make any new habit real and before we get into that, we want to send a huge shout out and special thanks to our sponsors who help make this podcast possible for you. Performance tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. So let's dive into today's episode. Now, here's the four steps that we've determined that it takes to implement any new habit in your life. The first step is to understand your why, mm -hmm. really have the bigger goal or the desire and be very clear of that. The second step is to then determine the actual habit that you wanna create. A lot of people think about the habit first before they even have their why mm -hmm. or realize what their why is. And you'll understand here in a little bit why it's important to, to have these clarified in this order. So the why and then determine the specific habit that's gonna help you achieve that why. The third mm -hmm. step is to then make it super easy for that habit to thrive then the fourth step is to give it time, allow it to incubate and allow yourself to get results and to be able to reevaluate. So we're going to give some very specific examples from our own lives, break this down and show you how these four steps work and how you can implement them in your own life. So mm. Derek, why don't you share an example of a habit that you have made stick in your life for the long term? Awesome. I'm very excited to share this. The habit that has worked for me has been developing meditation. Now I say developing meditation because throughout high school, especially my junior year, like I was diving into, we were discussing Eckhart Tolle's book and New Earth and I was just diving into that realm of discovering more of my purpose, of what it meant to actually have a pain body and just experiencing like a deeper significance within myself. And through that, I heard the topic of meditation and we had discussed it. And then as, as that started happening through the education, I actually kind of started feeling a little bit more alien, alienated as I was diving into it, but I knew that there was significance within it. Alienated felt, because people around you weren't meditating. Exactly, yeah, it was like, you and I would talk about it for hours. And I was in know? California and you were in Montana, yeah. so it was on the phone, Yeah. but nobody you were in school with were meditating. Sitting down, meditating, yeah, and I had just, so we were, we were discussing it and it just started coming up more and more and more and more. And so I just wanted really just to try it. I wanted to just give it a go. And the why with it, my, my own deeper purpose of why was I wanted to feel the purpose within my life. I actually wanted to feel the significance. It's kind of a contradiction when we're diving into it and I'm feeling alienated, but some part of my soul is starting to feel more significance through this higher purpose, through this truth that's 
you know, we don't talk about meditation and the school system and that jazz. And I was just gravitating towards it. Right. So that's the second step, right? So your first step was feeling like you had purpose in your, in your life. That's the mm-hmm. why meditation then became the habit that yeah. you wanted to start implementing, experimenting with and doing more of, right? So then what happened? So when I started with it, I wanted to make it super simple for me. This is the third step. I wanted to make it very achievable. So I just started with 10 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. You know? I found I found that during that 10 minutes, all that, I, all that I was focusing on was just my breath. And even though if my mind was bouncing back and forth from thousands of thoughts, I would just bring my attention back into my breath. And did you have a set time of the day that you said, I'm gonna meditate for 10 minutes at this time? Yeah, it was morning time. So having a set time. And did you set up a your environment so that it could support you with that? Yes, very much so. So it was actually at that time just in my bedroom because it was in the basement. So uh, it was calm, it was quiet. Did, did you just sit on your bed or did you actually create like a little meditation area yeah that was the that was the other thing that i did was set the intention of all right this is going to be my meditation chair i actually had i brought a chair Mm -hmm. i put i put a pad on it it was like when i sit down onto this chair this is going to be the goal that i'm looking to achieve Mm -hmm. so you set up your environment you made it sit you made it achievable you didn't it's very common people start something new especially like meditation where it's like Okay, yeah, I'm going to do an hour a day or two hours a day. Mm-hmm. And for 99.9% of people, it's just totally unrealistic and unachievable in the beginning. Yeah. Something you may work up to, but certainly not something in the beginning. So you went through step three, and then, and then what happened? And so through that process, the step four was I just gave it time. I was patient with it. I was mm-hmm. patient within the practice itself, actually. You didn't think all... like, oh, if I meditate for, for a few weeks, I'm going to be enlightened and then I can stop meditating. <laughs> no. You didn't go into it with that mindset. <laughs> that, would be, that would be like really cool if that did happen, but my mindset was not that way. And it actually took about five months of consistency for, for me where I suddenly saw significant results Mm. but there there were there were what i would call um kind of gradual baby stepping stones of progress yeah which which kept like driving it Mm -hmm. but i kind of had i had that in my my mindset from the get-go that actually this is going to be something that i'm going to do for the rest of my life yeah Uh, and when i had that intention that was that's my concept of give it time, you know, and really, really practice it. And that was what I was doing and started seeing results. And then the length of time was able to get longer. The space between my thoughts was getting longer so that the stillness and the calmness and the peacefulness and the connection to my heart, listening actually deep into my stomach started arising through that space. Uh, And then moving to California and then we would we would meditate together. We'd mm-hmm. go up to a Buddhist temple and then dive into more meditation through through a master, through a guru up there that then started leading meditation. So, so you started surrounding yourself around people and that that were supporting you with that journey. Oh, very much so. Which is a big huge. yeah. I mean, that's a big part of step three, right? And yeah. Set yourself up for success. Be supported. But then you moved to Santa Fe a couple of years ago, and you're in a new environment. Yeah. Um, but yet you still meditate every morning. Yeah. R- roughly, you said maybe 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And do you still have a chair in your room or, or what's your meditation area now? So now I have a stump. Mm-hmm. I actually I actually have a, a meditation stump that I've set up outside right where the sun comes up. Mm-hmm. So, that then, so then I go and I sit down barefoot. You know, on on the meditation stump, barefoot on on the earth, and then and then I dive into meditation. And now, um, it happens instantly where I just dive into that space of stillness. Right, the moment that I close my eyes. Yeah, your practice has allowed you to cultivate mm-hmm. uh, a much quicker result, much mm-hmm. quicker response. Right, whereas in the beginning it was challenging. <laughs> yep. Through practice, you got better and better at it, which is yeah. true for every single habit you want to create in your life. It's not just meditation, this applies to everything. I'm gonna share with you an example, one example from my life as well in a moment, um, but I wanna break down each four of these for you a little bit further. Um, hopefully you're taking notes or, or at least trying to really 
memorize this so you can implement these into the new habits you want to create. So again, step one, mm. figure out your goal, your desire, your why. What is it you're trying to achieve or what is it you want more of in your life? Then step number two, determine the habit. One habit. Start with one mm. simple habit that can help you get to that goal and start very small, super small, right? Mm. The goal is I want to lose 50 pounds in a year. Okay, that's your goal. Great. Now, what's the one habit, the most effective, simple thing you can do today that's going to help you achieve that goal of losing 50 pounds in a year? Pick one, either diet or exercise, right? You know it's got to be either one of those. Yeah. So pick one to start with. You can always do more once that habit becomes automatic. And, and no, it doesn't take 21 days to create a new habit. That's, that's a falsity. Some habits take 21 days, some take seven days, some take six months, some takes a year. If you look at the studies on this, it depends on the person, depends on the habit, mm -hmm. depends on the intensity of it, depends on how, it depends on your repetition and how often you get to practice it. Mm -hmm. All these things make a big difference in how long it takes for your habit to become automated. And that's what we want is the habit to become automatic. Mm -hmm. um, so then we don't really have to think about it anymore. You still have to do mm -hmm. it and you still have to take the steps to do it and make mm -hmm. sure your environment supports you. But we really want it to be automatic. So start super small with one habit, right? I'm going to exercise 10 minutes a day, five days a week. That's a good small starting habit mm -hmm. for someone who doesn't exercise at all. Just, I'm gonna wake up at this time, I'm gonna go outside and I'm going to walk for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. or I'm gonna drive to the gym and get on the elliptical for 10 minutes. Start super small because it's the act of showing up and it's the mm -hmm. act of, of repeating something that you're going to start seeing results and then you'll be able to do more of it. But start super small. Step three is then make it super easy for that habit to thrive. Mm -hmm. So change your environment to support that habit, right? Um, if you're trying to meditate in the morning in an environment where people are running around, throwing pans around and cooking and yelling and screaming uh -huh. and stuff like that, do you think you're going to be very successful with it? <laughs> no, you're going to be super distracted, yeah. right? Or you're going to try, you're going to have the TV on in the next room and it's blasting and you sit down and try and meditate for 10 minutes. Maybe as years and years go on, you get really good at it, you can do it. But in the beginning, no. Mm -hmm. So you have to set up your environment, create your, mm -hmm. your for you, whatever your, your goal is, your habit is, uh, set up your meditation chair, right? Whatever that means for the habit for you. Set yourself up for success and then get support and be supported. So surround yourself with people who are doing already what you want to do. In this case, meditating or in losing weight or in, you know, being more loving or kind or being a, a millionaire or whatever your, your goal is and the habit that you want. Surround yourself with people that are already doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And then step four is give it time, and we say at least six months, mm -hmm. at least six months, because the bigger, longer habits will often take up to six months to where it becomes automated, mm -hmm. okay? So, and during that time, you can then observe the results. Like you said, you started noticing. It took about five months to really mm -hmm. start noticing, wow, this is actually working for me, and I'm mm -hmm. getting better at it. Mm -hmm. Some habits you're going to notice in two or three weeks. Others, it's going to take a lot longer. So give it six months, be dedicated, and then reevaluate. So I'm going to break down real quick in just a couple of minutes a new habit that I created a few months ago and, and take it through this process to give you another example. So um, my why, my goal, you know, my desire is to be at a very highly competitive level in CrossFit as a sport at a professional level. Mm -hmm. that, I decided I wanted to do that just over a year ago, mm. committed myself to it, so I started training for that. That's, that's my goal. Now, there's a deeper why behind that, obviously significance of, mm. of contribution, of being able to, to show up in the world in a way and utilize the success from that, uh, the, the, what it does to change my life as a human being, mm. the person I become through that journey to be able to contribute to society and humanity in a much larger way. Mm -hmm. I feel that that is a vehicle for me to do that. And I absolutely love training mm -hmm. and CrossFit and it as a sport. And so that became a big goal for me. Now, I've created m multiple habits, positive habits that have supported me towards that goal so far. But one I've created recently 
was waking up at 5.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. and going to train at 6.30 uh, in the morning. And the reason I needed to do that was because so I could train in the morning and then work throughout the day. I do a lot of work at a computer and then be able to train again in the evening. So I have enough time through the day to do it all. So I had to wake up earlier because I was waking up at seven or eight, going to bed at 11 or midnight. And there's just not enough time in the day on that kind of schedule. So wake up at 5.30. Now, that's a very difficult habit. Mm -hmm. When you're waking up at 8 a.m. and all of a sudden you want to start waking up at 5.30, anyone who's ever tried, trust me, it's very, very challenging, mm -hmm. right? But, um, but I knew the habit, so that's step two, and um, started somewhat small, but I actually dove right into it, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I just said, okay, I need to be in bed by 9.30, at night to be able to wake up at 5.30 and get a full eight hours of sleep. Well, guess what? For two months straight, I wasn't getting to bed till like 11 mm. and still waking up at 5.30. But I did some things to support my environment, right? I uh, put my phone on a specific alarm and put it across the room so I have to get up, have to go to the phone. I didn't allow, I didn't set any snooze. So again, you know, if you put a snooze on, then you know, you're gonna lay down 10, 15 minutes and then try and get up again. Mm. It's just the worst thing you can do first thing in the morning. So mm. one alarm and I said to myself, and, and I visualize every night before I go to bed, I visualize myself waking up at 5.30, turning off the alarm, going downstairs, getting my breakfast and going. Mm. I would visualize that process because I knew it was gonna be challenging, mm. right? Um, I did certain things, you know, put a mask over my eyes so, you know, the lights don't wake me up so I can try and sleep deeper. Um, just different things to support the environment around me. Now, for the first two months, um, was very difficult. I was only sleeping five or six hours a night, but I still, I said, it doesn't matter. If I only sleep five hours, I still get up, I still go, and I still go do my training. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna feel like crap and tired. And if I do, I just lay down for 30 minute meditation yeah. And then I'm recharged. And so that's another thing, setting up my environment for success. Mm -hmm. I allow myself towards the middle of the day or end of the day when I know I'm going to be exhausted and tired to have a 30-minute window where I can lay down and, mm -hmm. and listen to a guided meditation or just lay down for 30 minutes um, and, and support that. Now, a new thing I've done recently that's really helped support my environment is get my wife and kids on board with the schedule too. Now, they don't wake up at 5.30, but I got them uh, on board with the schedule of, hey, we all start getting ready for bed at 9. Because one of the challenges was I'd go get ready for bed at 9 or 9.30, and they'd still be up at 10.30 with the lights on, making noises. And so, of course, it's going to be really hard for me to go to sleep, you know, until they go to sleep too, because they don't have to wake up till 6.30 or 7, right? So now they're on board, everyone's getting ready for bed, all the TVs, everything's off at nine o'clock. Mm. We're reading, you mm. know, from nine to 9.30, brushing our teeth, and everyone's in bed between 9.30 and 10. Mm. So that, again, setting up the environment, getting people to support you, getting support around you, um, really helps you to make that habit stick. Mm. You know, now it's, it's very easy for me at 5.30 when I, wake up to go and I get at least seven hours. Mm. Um, my goal is to really increase that to a minimum of eight hours and that's the next step for me. And now I've been doing this for probably three months and I'd still say there's another three months of this for it to really <laughs> stick, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where the six months really comes in. Um, and that's where the fourth step is in this case, is give it time, be dedicated, be focused, mm -hmm. observe the results and reevaluate. If you have to change something because it's not working for you, you have to change something to help you achieve your goals, be willing to, to change as needed, but not mm -hmm. through laziness or not because you don't believe you can do it, mm -hmm. but because you maybe you've found a better way or even a better habit. Or in this case, let's say you start exercising 10 minutes a day, right, for the first few months, you're like, wow, I could do 20 minutes a day now. Mm. Okay, so increase it, right? Mm. Make it better, put more time into it if that's your natural next step of progression. So that is how you mm. implement, start and implement any new positive habit in your life and make it stick for the better. So astounding. And one, one thing now, one thing that I'd like to ask with that new habit was it something that, let's say, let's say even you could sleep in, like, you know, for someone that's wanting to change something deeply, you know, on a weekend, what would you do even 
during that time frame for this initial two months? So yeah, for the initial two months, I still set my alarm at 5.30. Yeah. And even like on the weekends when I don't have to get up till seven or eight, um, I still get up at 5.30 mm -hmm. and I'll go to the phone just like turn off the alarm, just like I'm gonna wake up. Mm -hmm. And I even have it in my mind like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna wake up at 5.30, I might go to the bathroom or I might go downstairs, mm -hmm. get a glass of water or something. And then I'll go lay down and go back to mm. sleep. They're still creating that internal rhythm, yep. consistency, dedication, persistence on a daily basis. Even, even with the opportunity to be able to sleep in, that's, I love, I love that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so I still get that extra sleep that I need, which is so important in training to be an athlete is, you know, the more sleep you can get, the better because yeah. recovery is so important. And it's true for every person, mm -hmm. whether you're an athlete or not, the more sleep yeah. you get, actually, the better it is for you. But, um, so I still get that extra hour, hour and a half, but I just, yeah, create mm. that internal loop, that internal rhythm that's, you know, 5.30 a.m. I've got to get up to the alarm. I got to get myself out of bed. So, mm. you know, when you have those opportunities for leniency or, or you know, flexibility, still do the action mm. that's going to help the habit stick, but mm. then you can give yourself some flexibility in the times where you don't, like I don't have to get up at 5.30 on Saturday. And it's actually better for me if I get an extra hour or two hours of sleep because I'm going to recover faster and then I can train harder. So, but I want the habit to stick. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's an awesome question. Mm -hmm. And figure out how you can apply that in helping your habits stick. Well, that's it for today's episode. Our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do. Each week, you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you. And we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag activating greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better and a huge shout out to our sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's performance tea, that's T-E-A, performancetea.com, and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website and it also works on Amazon. Again, activate 15 and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing teas. We appreciate you tuning in and for supporting our sponsors who make this show possible. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again and we'll talk to you on the next episode.